Hi guys, it's Nancy, and if you don't know, I am the Foiling Empress. So I do a lot of foiling. I have over 300 videos on foiling, and there are two types of foiling. There's toner foiling and hot foiling. This video is going to focus on toner foiling, and don't worry if you're new to foiling. I'm going to make this pretty easy. I'm going to try, try to make this video under 30 minutes, and these are the five five top mistakes people are making when they are foiling. If you are not aware, we have a Facebook group. It is called the Foiling Snobs Club. You can see the sticker there. You can join us at the Foiling Snobs Club on Facebook and we will help you out. You can also email us at any time at foilingsnobsclub at gmail.com. All right, let's get into this. So this is gonna be a pretty basic video. There's a lot to learn about foiling, but I'm hoping that if you are just starting out, um, that I can help answer or troubleshoot some issues for you. All right, so the first question, the first mistake people are making is they're using the wrong types of foil. So let's get that out of the way right now, okay? There are several manufacturers of foil, okay? There are a lot of companies that are doing foiling now. There's a lot of names that are doing foiling, but... Really, the difference you need to look for when you are buying foil is, is it toner foil or is it hot foil? So toner foil, and I'm going to show you those in a second, needs something to stick to. It needs a surface, something that will melt and stick to it. So there are products like um, Deco Foil Duo Gel. You can try Super Fine Clear Embossing Powder. You can even try the toner ink. I don't recommend that by the way. Um, but that's not a video for right now. But so if you are looking for toner foiling, which we're going to talk about here, you need to make sure you're using the right foil. All of these foils I have in front of me are hot foils. These will not work in your mink or your laminator. Okay. So do not buy these foils if you are looking to toner foil. Okay. So they are Toto, which is out of the UK, Foil Quill, and this comes in small packs and large packs, Gemini Foil Press Foil, Go Press and Foil, Glimmer Foil, this is the old packaging, this is the new packaging, and then we have a company called Blue Bonnet, which has hot stamping foil, and Crafty Critta, which has hot foil. All of these foils are for your hot foiling machines. They will not work in the system we're going to do. If you try to use these, and I'll demonstrate in a little bit, you will get over foiling. So number one, make sure you always keep your foil separate and know what kind of foil you're buying. These foils will work in the foil quill. They will work in the Gemini foil press. They will work in the go press and foil. They will work in the Spellbinders glimmer machine. It is a completely different type of foiling. And if you're interested in that kind of foiling, you want to go to my hot foiling playlist. Okay. We're not talking about that today. We're going to talk about toner foiling. Okay, so mistake number one is using the wrong foils. So the foils you want to buy if you are going to use your mink or your laminator is Heidi Swap Mink Foil, Deco Foil, which comes two ways. It comes in a roll or it comes in these packs. These are all Deco Foil. Um, Crafty Critta sells toner foil. Blue Bonnet sells toner reactive foil. She may also call it laminator foil in some of her older one. Here we go. Textile toner foil. It's all the same there. And um, we recommend some companies such as H&H &H Supply and Pro World. And these are all linked in the Foiling Snobs Club for you. So these foils don't have an adhesive built in, so they need something to stick to. And what they're going to stick to are toner printed images. Now, toner printed images, what does that mean? It means that it must be printed with a laser printer, okay? So another mistake that people make, I don't really call this mistake number two, but it is sort of a mistake, is you cannot print these from your inkjet printer. You must print them from a laser printer. If you don't have a laser printer, you have a couple of options. One, you can purchase um, 
toner sheets. So you can purchase them from Crafty Krita. You can purchase them from Deco Foil. Um, there's quite a few companies that now print their own toner sheets, which means they've already professionally printed it on a laser printer. And that toner is raised, and you'll see that the foil will stick to it. An inkjet printer, which is what most of us have at home, will not work. So if you have an inkjet printer, which usually requires liquid ink to refill it, it is not going to work. Okay, the second thing you can do if you don't have a laser printer is you can download your images to a thumb drive, take them to your local copy shop and ask them to print them out for you. And again, they normally print them out on a toner or laser printer because it's high um, volume. So and it doesn't matter what color they're printed in on the laser printer, the foil will stick to everything. So if you have a color laser printer, and in this design, if you printed your butterfly in purple and you printed the words in black and you think the foil is just going to stick to the words, anything you print with a laser printer, the foil is going to stick to. Okay, so number one, make sure you have the correct foil. And number two, make sure you are using toner printed designs. That being said, there's a whole different alley we can go down using what type of laser printer, what settings on your laser printer, what type of software you're opening up. I will tell you that I use a an older mono chrome, which is just a black and white brother laser printer. I look for a 600 DPI print setting with a front and a back opening so that thicker paper can go through it. And um, I use toner fixation on the brother settings. There's a different video for that. And I use Silhouette software to print my images. You don't need any special software. Silhouette software is actually free. You don't need a Silhouette machine to download it. But there's a lot of software programs out there that you can use to set up so that you have the best quality printing. So if you're gonna do it from home, that's a different kind of uh, tree branch we're gonna go down about laser printing, which we're not gonna do in this video. All right. Um, the third issue, which is huge, 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 is using the wrong paper, okay? So we're going to demonstrate that here. First, I'm going to demonstrate using the wrong foils and then also using the wrong paper. Now, I have my laminator machine, okay? Now, you want to let your laminator heat up for a minimum of 30 minutes if you're going to use a laminator. We are going to switch to the mink machine because, yes, the mink machine is far superior than a laminator. And a lot of people want to debate me on this, but I challenge you, um, a laminator is not going to do what a mink needs to do. A laminator, you should not be spending more than $40 on a laminator. If you're spending $70, $80 on a laminator, you might as well buy a mink machine. So the difference is a laminator basically only heats up on one side and the rollers are there to push the paper through. On a mink machine, you have rollers on the top and the bottom which provide pressure. So that pressure helps the foil stick to your image and it's heated and you have different heat settings so you go from zero to five. So I will show you on a laminator, but I will tell you if you want better results, you want to use a mink machine. The mink comes in two sizes, a six inch and a 12 inch. Um, the 12 inch we call the Big Mama. So if you are looking for something that laminates and foils, then you're gonna want Big Mama mink. And and I know some of you guys that are over in other countries, not in the U.S., can only get Big Mama mink. But I prefer the 6-inch mink because I'm a card maker. I normally don't need to foil anything super big. Um, for example, here, I can always cut these down and foil them smaller. All right, so let me... Um, even when this turns green, it's not going to be ready until it's 30 minutes. So if you are using a laminator, make sure you let it heat up for at least 30 minutes. I've had this one a very long time. It works pretty well. Not all Scotch laminators are the same. I don't even think they make this one anymore. Um, the one they sell at Target is terrible. Do not buy that one. If you're going to buy a laminator, I have laminator videos. You can get a laminator for around $30. I recommend the Swingline laminator or the Amazon Basics laminator. But honestly, if you're going to spend the money, just spend the extra $30. It's around $65, $70. Bucks. Get yourself a mini mink machine. Save yourself a lot of headache and just get the mink. Okay? Um, and then last but not least, if you are not 
dusty dusting your images. Now, there was a bad, bad rumor last year where people were adding embossing powder to their foiling. You don't want to add anything to your foiling. In fact, you want to take dust away and you can get a cute, soft little kabuki makeup brush there in my Amazon shop. So let me show you all of these mistakes people are making. Hopefully you don't make the same mistakes. So I'm going to cut my papers down here so we can show the difference between going through a mink and going through a laminator. And I have printed these out on uh, copy paper, different recommended papers for you guys. And I know some of you guys are in different countries. So in terms of foil recommendations, I'm going to recommend check out Crafty Krita. If you are not in the U.S., they do ship all over. They have hot foils. They have toner foils. They have pre-printed toner foil sheets. Uh, they have colored toner sheets. Again, we're getting more advanced into what I'm talking about, and I'm not going to go over all of those things in this video, but I have plenty of playlists. And again, you'll want to join us over at the Foiling Snobs Club on Facebook so you can get more assistance. We have a wonderful team. They're very helpful. Everybody there is kind and wants everyone to succeed. And we're called Foiling Snobs because we want the best out of our foiling. All right, so let's start with um, using the wrong foil. And when you are using a laminator, you do not need a cover sheet, really. I mean, you could use a, um, a piece of copy paper if you wanted to. But you want as much heat and pressure as you can get. So using a carrier folder, which I will use in the mink, is actually going to defeat that purpose. So if you wanted to, you could just use a regular piece of copy paper. In fact, let me grab that quick. All right, so I just have a regular folded piece of copy paper, and I'm going to put my image and my foil in there. Now, before you do any foiling here, you need to dusty, dusty. I lost my brush already. I lost my pretty brush. It'll turn up. So you want to dust your image very lightly, and you want to dust the back of your foil very lightly. This is going to take off any small particles of dust, and you're going to stick the dull side of the foil or non-colored side of the foil to the to the image again because this is laser printed when that heats up the foil should stick to it okay and this is just using regular copy paper and the other one i'm going to use the wrong foil here i'm going to use a piece of um, foil quill foil this is the number one mistake I see when folks are um, coming to our group and looking for help I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to dusty, dusty my image, dusty, dusty the back of the foil. And I'm going to put it in this little paper carrier sheet. And that just keeps everything from rolling up inside the laminator. Okay, so this is copy paper using a laminator using regular mink deco foil. And you can see that came out okay. Not too bad. Very cool. Now, I also printed this design on an inkjet. 
So I want to show you guys the same thing. Here is that leftover foil. We're going to dusty dusty the image. And I'm going to dusty dusty the back of my foil. And I'm going to show you here. This is inkjet printed. What's going to happen there? Okay, so as far as using the right foil, this is mink deco foil made for toner foiling, and this is hot foil. Okay, do you see all of this foil stuck all over the place? If you have foil stuck in places you don't want it, you are using the wrong foil. See how it sticks there? What happens is once this foil gets heated up, the hot foil, the adhesive is already built into this foil, so it sticks to everything. Your whole paper will get covered. Because my machine doesn't get hot enough, it's not as dramatic, but this is the number one image I see a problem of in our group is people are using the wrong foil. So always make sure that you separate your foils when you buy them between toner foils and hot foils, okay? So we don't want to use hot foils. The second thing is to make sure you are using a laser printed image. So if you're printing this at home on your inkjet printer, you got nothing. It doesn't work. So you wanna make sure that you are using the right printed image, either a pre-printed toner, and people advertise it as a laser or toner printed image. So if you're printing this from your inkjet, it is not going to work at all, okay? All right, let's talk about types of paper. I'm gonna move um, from the laminator to the mink because I wanna show you guys the results of using the paper. And like I said, basics, that's basics right there. If you wanna use your laminator, that's, you know, that's fine. But if you really wanna get into this, I recommend a mink. All right. So when you're using your mink, there's a couple things you need to know. One, what type of pressure should you be using, or not pressure, heat should you be using? Um, and there is a little bit of a difference between the big mink and the smaller mink. But I want you guys to notice as I turn this on, there's a power button in the back. And we're going to press the center button and it'll go zero to five. And we're going to start at three. Three to four is normally where I use this. And I want you guys to notice how fast this heats up. And I'm gonna move these hot foils out of the way because we don't wanna mix those up. Now, in terms of brands of foil, I do recommend a few brands because I do believe, number one, it's a better value of foil. Um, and number two, you get, you know, you get more for your money, but there is a difference in foil companies. Um, some of them are the same. Some of them, if you go on Amazon and you buy it and it doesn't work, you're risking it yourself. I mean, you get, you get what you pay for, right? So a lot of these companies that are online are not very good quality foils. So the companies I recommend are Crafty Krita out of Australia. They ship all over the world. Um, Blue Bonnet, she's on Facebook. She ships all over the world. Um, Pro World Foil or H&H &H Foil. Um, mink Foil and Deco Foil is okay when you just start out, but you don't get a good value. You get a couple of sheets for the amount of money you're spending. It's not a good value. It's good foil, but it's not a good value. And just to give you an example, this is the roll you get from H&H &H Foil. It's a large roll. And then you, um, you cut it down. You know, you'll need a machine, but you can cut this down if you have somebody handy in your life with a chop saw. You can cut this into a six-inch roll of foil. But I would rather have a roll of foil than these sheets of foil, and I say this all the time because I basically get one card front out of this, and then I have a small inch-and-a-half, two-inch strip of foil left over, which only thing I can do with that is sentiments, where with this, you get a lot more foil on a roll than you do on, on a sheet. All right, so let's talk about papers here, okay? So I've printed these same samples out on different colors of white paper and different colors 
of colored paper. You can still use a piece of parchment paper or copy paper as your carrier. Look, that's green. It's super hot already. But um, Mink has these carrier sheets. Now, these are not laminator sheets, so I want to point that out to you guys, that laminator sheets are designed for laminating. I have a project. I want to and seal it in, then I use laminating sheets. Do not use this as a carrier sheet. There's adhesive built in here, and these are specifically designed to laminate something. You know, you wanna make bookmarks, or you wanna save photos or something. These are carrier sheets, and these carrier sheets don't have adhesive built in them, so their only design is to protect your foil and protect your paper so it doesn't get eaten in the mink machine. These are designed for high heat. There's no adhesive. It's not going to laminate anything. It's just designed to protect that, and I believe Blue Bonnet sells these now if you can't find them, and you can cut these down smaller. Okay, so let's talk about papers. So I'm going to talk about... Um, the one thing you should always do is always print your design on copy paper and make sure your design fits, everything looks good, and do a trial run on copy paper. Um, because if you have any issues, for example, my printer, I just switched the drum out. My printer has a dirty drum and you can see I have all this kind of fallout from my toner. Um, I don't want to use expensive paper and find that out. So I want to find that out on copy paper. But different smoothness of paper is going to determine how well it foils. Bumpy, porous papers do not work. Normally, colored papers don't work. The um, companies that I recommend for smooth white paper are Hamilco, if you are in the U.S., it's on my Amazon shop. There's a Hamilco Glossy and a Hamilco Semi Gloss. 80 pound is great. They send it to you in a box like this. Um, Crafty Krita has a very similar paper. It is called DIY Foiling Paper. These papers work great for hot foiling or, or toner foiling. And then there's also Hammer Mill, um, 60 pound Hammer Mill Premium Color Cardstock. Um, which is a little, it's a little lighter. You don't want to go too thick because thick paper, again, is porous and porous paper doesn't foil well. So try to stick to 80 pounds or less, honestly. Okay, so here is a piece of copy paper. I'm not going to bother running that through. We know that's going to work. The test that you guys want to see is just regular white paper, right? So I have a piece of the Hamilco 80 pound here. Probably could have used mini mink. And I'm going to use some blue bonnet. Let's use this one. Toner foil. Also, your foils come in nice um, baggies. Keep them stored in them. You want to keep pet hair, um, dust, those kinds of things. Um, and you want to keep your foil from getting scratched up. So we are going to, this is the Hamilco 80 pound, dusty, dusty. And this is a super smooth paper, works great. And all we're gonna do is put this in our carrier sheet and we are on setting three and wanna make sure everything's nice and smooth. We want to put the folded edge in first. Now, as we're feeding this through, you want to hold it and guide it in. If you let this go when it's guiding through, I have my hand underneath it, there's a possibility that the back end of this could get not, um, knocked down into the rollers and get eaten by the machine. It happens all the time. So whether you have the small or the large one, you just wanna hold this and feed it through to make sure it's going through. It is a slow process, but again, it is providing heat and pressure. It's completely different from a laminator. Um, it's not completely different, but it's <laughs> it's designed for foiling, okay? Now, this paper is the most equivalent to the Crafty Krita paper. So again, if you cannot find it on Amazon, you can search Crafty Krita. It's craftycrita.com. I'll put all the links down below for you guys um, for this paper. All right, I only have a few minutes left. I really wanna try to make this as quick as possible. 
The next thing you want to do is allow it to just cool. If you rip the foil off immediately, it doesn't have time to cool down and bond. And that cooling down period is very important for that foil to bond to your image. Also, certain colors of foils do work better than other kinds of foils. So I'm going to do, let me see if I can do two at the same time here. Yes. So I have two different black card stocks here because you guys always ask about black card stock. Um, if you are in the UK, the company that I recommend is Lime Tree Crafts. You'll have to search them in the UK. Um, Lime Tree Crafts has very nice um, paper. It's super smooth for foiling. And they have a really pretty black and, a, well, not pretty, but a very effective black and a white foil. So, or sorry, black and white paper that's super smooth. So I'm going to do both of these at the same time, just cutting my foil. The other thing is cool about toner foiling is you really don't get any over foiling unless you had a problem with your printing. So if you have over foiling, it's because you're using the wrong foil or your paper has some kind of coating on it, which is causing the foil to stick. So if you have over foiling, um, check your foil first, make sure that you are using toner or textile foil and check your paper to make sure there's no coating. Okay, so this is one um, black card. I'm just gonna dusty, dusty and dusty, dusty the back of my foil. Again, this will heat up on the image. The foil will stick to it. And then when it cools down, we'll reveal it. Design is also important. If you have a tight knit design, your foil may not adhere properly or a design that's too thin, your foil may not adhere properly. Um, I will tell you that pearl foil is notorious for not foiling very well. So just be careful with that. All right, so we're gonna run these two through while I reveal the other one to you. And again, I'm just gonna kind of hold this and guide it in. And you wanna use these cover carrier sheets only um, in the mini mink or the large mink. You can use copy paper if your machine eats it, which happens, you should buy several of these, by the way, because after some time they get kind of sticky, they get foil stuck on them. You can clean it up with 100% acetone, no conditioners, but um, they get to a point where it's just time to replace them. If your machine eats it, throw it out. Please do not try to resurrect and save it. The other thing I'm going to say is please do not use an iron a heat press. That is not what is des they're designed to be used for. So don't ask me questions about using an iron or a heat press because I'm just going to not answer it, honestly. My suggestion is to always use a mink or a laminator that's been heating up for 30 minutes and you will always get better results on a mink. All right, so let's take a look at this one that's already cooled now. And this is using the Hamilco 80 pound. Okay, now I do have some over foiling here. Let me pull this out of the way. And I'm going to say, because I know I'm using toner foil, this paper does have a slight coating to it, but my overfoiling isn't terrible. Like it's it's just mostly color and not foil. So it's probably because my machine is too hot. If you get wrinkling or your foil, you know you're using toner foil, again, check your paper. This paper does have a slight coating to it, but also check your heat settings. So because I'm using the Big Mama Mink, I may need to go down a setting, but you can see how smooth that foil is. Let's see how it did on the black card stock. Now, with porous or colored papers, you probably want to go up in heat. Probably want to be at a four or five in heat when you're using those heat setting. Now, if you are looking to do foiling with hot foil dyes, um, you cannot do that in the system. Okay, that's the what we talked about in the beginning. You have to go to hot foiling, hot foiling dyes. You cannot do that with this system. 
Oops, static electricity here. And again, do not add anything to your foiling. I'm just going to move these to the side because there's one more thing I want to show you guys real quick. are learning anything interesting or you are just getting into foiling please click the thumbs up button and the little butterfly in the bottom right hand corner and the bell so that you get notifications when I post new videos um, and again join our Facebook group it's foiling snobs club on Facebook I do a ton of foiling and I love to you know help people out and learn how to use whatever machine you have whatever foils you have so that you get the best possible foiling. Okay, well, this is my first time using this paper, so we will see how this works. And again, you want to dusty, dusty the back of your foil and dusty, dusty your image. that in through the folded side. Okay, let's look at how my black cardstock came out. That is pretty good. I have some um, extra toner on there. That is not the paper, that's my printer. And look at this one. This one came out really good. Okay, so let me tell you who these two black card stocks are. And again, these are a little easier to find in the U.S. So the only colored card stock I found in the U.S. which foils pretty well is, surprise, surprise, Michael's Recollection 65 pound card stock. You don't want to use heavy card stock. Michael's Recollection 65 pound. The colored paper works great. It's super smooth. And that's what this one is. I have some toner fallout again. I just put a new drum in my printer. So don't worry about that. But everything is foiled. It's really smooth. It looks great. Maybe I should have picked a foil that wasn't so dark. And the other one is Hamilco Black cardstock, which works okay. There are some spots that did not foil because this is a thick cardstock. So for this paper, it's actually better to use it on a higher heat setting. So I'm gonna go up a notch. I do have the other half of that printed here somewhere. And let me put a lighter foil on there so it's easier for you guys to see. So we'll do that one again. some beautiful crafty Krita foil. Oops, that one's a little short, but that's okay. So again, we're gonna dusty, dusty our image, dusty, dusty the back of the foil. Now, if you have a part of the image you don't want to foil, here's a trick for you. Sometimes we don't want to foil a certain part of the image. So let's say I don't want to foil those last two butterflies. You're going to take your old used foil and you're going to put it colored side on the image, okay? If you don't cover this, this toner is going to stick to your carrier sheet. And you don't want to turn this over because then the green side will stick to it. So use the colored side, stick it to your image, and you will see that that's not going to foil. So if there's an image you don't want to foil, use the back side of your already used foil. 
And you want to save your leftover foil because you can use those on toner sheets. Again, I have other videos kind of showing that. The machines do shut off. There's a safety period. I don't know what the timing or heat setting is, but after you've been using them for a while, they do shut themselves off. That is built into them. Now, if you have a foil that works well or doesn't work well, make notes on your foil that it works or doesn't work. Like on this red foil, I had a little overfoiling. I will put a note on here to lower my heat. Okay, let's reveal this guy here. This is a little surprise, and if you are interested in this, this came to me from my friend at Blue Bonnet. And you guys, these are sticker sheets. So this foiled very nicely. Normally, sticker sheets, especially clear sticker sheets, over foil. I don't have any over foiling. It printed beautifully. It foiled nicely. I have the other half I'm gonna do in a different color. And yes, these are clear adhesive stickers. So you guys are always asking me, how come my labels aren't aren't foiling well they're not sticking well I'm going to encourage you to check out blue bonnet and I'm going to do this gold foil again because it's too pretty now she doesn't have a shop you do have to purchase her products through her Facebook page but she does ship internationally okay so we're gonna dusty, dusty. This is the second page of stickers. We're gonna dusty, dusty the back of our foil. This foil comes from the wonderful Crafty Krita. Crafty Krita has like over 70 colors of toner foils. They have over 20 colors of um, hot foils. They have toner printed design. So again, if you don't have a laser printer and you wanna, um, you want to print or you want to foil but you don't have a laser printer they have beautiful designs they do also have that diy toner paper and they are the only company with colored toner sheets in the whole world so if you want to use that waste foil you can find black toner sheets anywhere crafty Krita is the only one that has colored toner sheets okay so this is still warm we're going to let this cool down before we reveal it All right, so let me show you. This was the side we didn't want to foil. It's not foiled, it's not damaged. We can still reuse our um, leftover foil there. And this one is, I think this is the Recollections. It feels smoother. Pretty good, and again, this fallout is from my printer. Don't pay attention to that. What we're looking at is, is everything foiled? Yes, it is. It looks great on black cardstock, and just raising that heat a little bit helps out because this is a thicker, porous cardstock. Um, actually, that's the Hamilco. This is much smoother. This is the Recollections. Okay, and the reason I know this is fallout and not overfoiling is because it's random, seems to be only in the center of my machine. If it was overfoiling, the whole thing would be covered. So that's how you know it's overfoiling. I also knew that because I can see it. See it there? That's fallout from my toner. I cannot do anything about that except clean my machine, right? So that's not overfoiling. That is a problem with my printer. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes it's not your foil and not your paper. But what I'm looking at here is on the images that did print cleanly that foil is very nicely adhered on there so 
Recollections from Michael, 65 pound is my number one recommendation for colored cardstock. Um, and if you can't find that, the Hamilco is pretty good. Just remember to turn the heat up. You probably want four or five, depending on which mink machine you're using, to make sure we have full coverage. We don't want to see underfoiling. Underfoiling means that we don't have enough heat or we don't have enough pressure. And normally we see that when using a laminator. All right, I've gone past my 30 minutes, so we're just going to reveal these stickers. Hopefully I've answered your questions. Again, number one, make sure you are using the right foil, which is toner foil, not hot foil. Um, if you want really good pressure, make sure you're, you are using a mink instead of a laminator. Make sure you're using the smoothest, lightest paper you can get. I, would, I recommend 65 to 80 pounds. You don't want to go over that. Make sure you are using the right heat setting for your machine and your paper. And make sure you are doing dusty, dusty. Look at these stickers. So just going up a little bit on a heat setting. And again, this is a little bit thicker. So I went from three to four and I have much better coverage. I mean, this looks great, but this looks better on those stickers. So if you are looking for clear stickers, they're over at Blue Bonnet. If you guys can support the companies like Blue Bonnet, Crafty Critta, those are the smaller companies that we want to keep in business. Again, Crafty Critta has amazing toner foils. They have like 65 or 70 colors. They have a lot now. They have hot foils. They have toner printed designs. They have toner sheets. You definitely want to pick those up because toner sheets will take all of this leftover foil and allow you to use all of this negative foil. And that's a different video I've done on that. Um, and you can use hot foils or toner foils with the toner sheets. Um, Blue Bonnet has the clear sticker paper. They also have some hot foils and some toner foils. And she now offers these carrier sheets if you don't have the carrier sheets for the make. Hopefully I've answered some questions for you guys. If you learned something new or thought this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. I will link everything down below and consider subscribing to my channel. And join us over at Foiling Snobs Club. Thanks for watching, guys. Look at all these pretties I'm going to be able to foil later. Here we go. All right, keep on foiling. Bye.